All right. Theology. This is a series which I've been hinting at pretty much since the creation of my channel, or, or at least since uh, I started having series which weren't vlogs. Uh, I've been thinking about a politics and politics, philosophy, and theology were the original ideas, uh, and now all three of them exist. So, um, in this series, I am going to attempt to, uh, well, I guess view it like the philosophy series, except that, uh, except that it's theology instead of philosophy. Yeah, but those things are similar. So it's more like, um, uh, well, I don't think philosophy and theology are exactly the same thing, but view this series as the same format as that. I'll be talking about things in the same order-ish, just talking about general theology topics. Uh, I might, uh, although I'm not, although I'm not going to try and do the thing which I did for only three episodes, I think, or four, uh, where I tried to define a certain theological topic, in that case, Raman or Varelza, uh, or humanness, if you haven't seen the, uh, the later episodes. Um, and, uh, in this series, I might do something like that, try and define God or try and define uh, the, a good religion. Uh, I know I'm certainly going to do trying to figure out, uh, in probably every one of my videos, uh, how a good theology is formed and what it does, but I don't know if the actual theology is what's important here. Maybe. Um, maybe I'll have to split this into two series, do something like uh, I don't know, like theology, uh, practicality, and theology, uh, philosophy, I don't know, um, something along the lines of what it should do and how it should do that versus what it should actually believe. I don't really have a solid grasp on what reality is. Uh, I don't know how better to put that. I'm not exactly... I know a lot of people have a pretty solid understanding of this is what's real, this is what's not real, um, whether they're a skeptic or a very pious person. Um, I know that some people are like that. They just like, this is what's real, this is what's not real, this is uh, how the world works, and this is why it works this way. Uh, even if this is, even if how, why it works that way is just that there is no rules, so things might as well work this way. Um, for me, things are a little more fluid, but also not fluid, because I know that there probably is a set of rules, I just have no idea what they are, and I don't think anyone has figured them out exactly yet. Or at least, the few people who have gotten close haven't been all that popular. I've, I've found a couple people who have hints of it, which is one of the reasons I like philosophy so much, uh, because every philosopher I, I read, or I hear about, or I study, and uh, I hear like this little kernel that stands out to me as like, oh, that's that's true. I don't know why it's true, but it's fundamentally true. Um, that little kernel of information. Um, I mean, ideally, we could probably figure out what's truth if we just had everybody study philosophy for a hundred years and write down the things we all agree on. Uh, as soon as we find the stuff at at least like a 60% agreement rate, boom, we found a map of more or less what the human species is. But, um, well, that's only if you believe popular, uh, popular science to be true science. Um, so this series is, uh, in this series, um, I'm in this first episode. You know what? I'll just skip straight into the first episode. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing in the series. It took exactly five minutes to explain that, but that's not, it's not the first time. Every other series first has taken five to seven minutes. Um, so in this first episode, I'll be discussing or I'll be talking about what a theolo what a good theology has to do. Not a religion, mind. Actually, you know what? Maybe I should make that the different series. Theology versus religion. 
um, if I can try and find what a religion should believe, but like I just said, I wouldn't know. But um, So I'm not specifically talking about religion here, I'm talking about theology. That said, most theologies, or at least most religions, are based on their theologies. Maybe all, not... I mean, maybe there's one, one or two that isn't, but... No, I, I don't know. I think it might be inherent, but whatever. This isn't the religion show, this is the theology show. Um, so I think a, a theology, now maybe not even a good one, but a theology is... Uh, an ideal theology uh, is set up in order to create, I don't think, happiness. I know that might be the goal of governance, government and government uh, runners, bureaucrats, or kings, but I think think that the goal of theology, same with religion, but religion can get a little closer to government. I think religion is like a government that's run on a theology rather than just purely the theology. Anyways, um, so a ideal theology, I think it's based on contentment rather than happiness. Uh, the perfect theology and probably the perfect religion tied to it, whatever its beliefs, uh, would ideally create a people who are entirely content with their lives. Uh, now, I don't think the religion can do it on its own, uh, not entirely at least, um, but the thing I think that a lot of people, I kind of want to say misunderstand, but maybe I'm wrong about this, um, but I think the thing that a lot of people believe is that inevitably natural philosophy or science, um, or natural sciences or whatever, will just naturally bring us to a point of happiness or of contentment. And I believe that's not true. I'll probably talk about why in another episode of some other show, uh, or maybe this show, but I think that theology has to be the thing which brings people to contentment. I don't, and that's the thing. I think that a lot of people uh, often talk about how theology, or religion at least, holds holds a society back. Uh, and I just think, I think that the ideal theology, it's not more, it's not really about holding people back as much as once it's found that perp perfect contentment level, it ideally would hold its society there. So, so if, uh, if a society could be hunter-gatherers and completely happy being hunter-gatherers, they might as well stay hunter-gatherers. There's no reason for them to invent the airplane, or the wheel, much less. Um, and I think, that's, I think that perspective is coming from theology. Uh, as for the sciences perspective, uh, it doesn't directly have to do anything with happiness or contentment. Uh, it has to do more with simply curiosity. Uh, which, to be fair, as a moderately curious person myself, I can tell you, uh, and you've probably found in your own experiences, uh, finding out something which you did not know before but were wondering about is a wonderful thing. Uh, whatever religion or not, if I don't know, I don't think it's physically possible to not be a religion, even if your religion is anti-theism. Um, but whatever religion you are, or not, I think that, I think that whatever created us, even if it's just random events, uh, the fact that we ended up with this purely curious, this pure intense curiosity was no accident. Even if life itself was an accident, uh, the fact that we survived and dominated the world or, well, at least this world, in such a way, I think has to do with the fact that we have more curiosity than others. Oh, you can point to things like, oh, we're more intelligent, but it, why are we more intelligent? Well, because we, uh, as time went on, we went and discovered more and more things, and eventually we had to have more brain space for it, um, and then slightly less brain space for it, because our brains got a little more efficient, which is why... Uh, it's always depressing for about a day or two in an anthropology or a science class when you find out the Neanderthals had bigger brains than us, but then you find out they had bigger brains, but they were less efficient. Um, so, here, I, I think that this might be a short episode. 
Uh, but then every time I say it, it hits like 45 minutes and I look back at the time and I'm like, what? Okay, but um, I think the ideal theology would have to base itself around how to create contentment. But in creating contentment, it has to be continuous. Because if a theology entirely ran a society then contentment would be guaranteed, but it doesn't. If nothing else, there's other theologies in that world, and at least one of them will have the mentality of everyone has to have this ideal, and if they don't, force them to, uh, or at least try to help them to, um, and that would inevitably create conflict. And that's just setting aside things like the, uh, the natural drive towards politicking, uh, even if that politicking is, I have a big stick, you have a big stick, let's go over to those other guys who don't have sticks rather than fighting each other. Boom. Politics. Um, but, uh, well, um, okay, so that's where that is. There it is. There's the camera. The camera is in a really precarious situation, uh, or placement. Um, but here's proof it's not stock footage. A little bundle of leaves. All right. So, a theology which exists, pretty much, I think has to, if it's not fluid, it has to be able to adapt to its individuals, which is difficult, because I know one main complaint of anti-theists, or at least uh, non-theists, is that they, or, well, they think they're non-theists, um, is that, is that theology pretty much is set in stone. You can't change theology. All you can do is deal with it. Um, but I think if that was honestly the case, it could never exist as a pseudo-government, um, aka a religion. Uh, it could never exist as a, this is how we should act, even if we're not actively going to enforce this moral co code, as a government would. Um, yeah, that's the trade-off with governments. Governments have to change by what the people believe. Uh, as to where religions don't have to change, but they also can't enforce things too much, otherwise they uh, will be just, uh, either stopped, people won't believe in them and thus won't fund them, uh, or support them. Uh, or they will uh, lose direct power from whatever holds it. So, um, yeah, so it's a precarious situation, but I think that, yeah, I guess I'll go with that for the end of this video. Uh, from this point on, more or less, uh, although if, I'm, if I change this view, I'll tell you, uh, but probably won't, at least not the fundamentals of this view. I'm going to be arguing from the point of an ideal theology being one in which it not only, uh, in which it creates contentment, not just for one society, the society in which it was created, but for humans. Uh, we can set aside alien species. Uh, actually, uh, I have made no secret of the fact that Orson Scott Card is one of my favorite authors on this channel. Uh, well, he's one of my favorite authors everywhere, not just on this channel, but, um, and he has a more optimistic view about what would happen if we started uh, talking to other races, especially if cardinals started talking to other races and monks. But the thing is, uh, I think that the, I'll be arguing in this, that the ideal theological perspective is one in which contentment can be created for humans. Uh, even if it's very highly culturally specific, uh, in the very least it has to be able to adapt not just to that culture, but to that culture either being either absorbing another culture or being overthrown by one. Uh, and if it can do that, then I'd say it is at least within the category of ideal, which isn't to say good, uh, theologies. It's just to say, big enough that they won't totally fail uh, as soon as anything happens. Uh, so then, I guess, worth considering would be the thing to say. Um, so yeah, 
that's what this series is going to be. Uh, the next episode probably won't come out for a couple days, but it'll come out soon. Uh, and I guess I'll give you a hint about that. In the next episode, I'll be talking about the change which I just brought up. Um, how and if a theology should change for various reasons. Um, so, yeah, enjoy the outro. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to make this outro because the uh, there's these little mallards who are playing, uh, or probably, well, for them it's probably just surviving, but it's funny to watch for me. Um, but usually I speed up the footage. Uh, it's going to be really weird to see them buzzing around uh, if I speed up the footage, considering it already they already act in sped up motions. But whatever, we'll see. You'll by this point you've already seen the intro, so you know what it is. But enjoy the generalized outro because that one's always the same. <laughs>